Welcome back to So You Really Want to Learn Latin and today we are going to take the bold step of moving on to the passive. Now, in Latin we have two voices, the active voice and the passive voice. So far all the verbs we've done have been used in the active voice and that is to say the subject of the sentence is doing the verb performing the action of the verb. When we move into the passive, however, the subject of the verb has the action of the verb done to him or her. Okay, so if I give you an example of that. When we say the master is teaching the pupil, the master is the subject, the verb is, is teaching, and the pupil is the object. In that sentence, the verb was in the active voice. That was the present tense active, is teaching. But we could have said, the pupil is being taught by the master. In that sentence, the subject would be the pupil. The verb would be, is being taught. And that verb is in the passive voice, present passive. And then we have an ablative at the end to say who is actually doing the teaching. So the pupil is being taught by the master. Now, learning the passive endings of all of our verbs is actually reasonably straightforward. I'm going to teach you a little trick for doing it, but We'll begin by just reminding ourselves that most verbs in most tenses follow a very, very similar pattern in terms of the endings. The endings are, not always, but, you know, normally, based on O, S, T, mus, tis, unt. Okay, so you remember amo and amo, amas, amat, amamas, amatis, amant. And in the future, amabo, amabis, amabit, amabimus, amabitis, amabunt. Okay, so those endings, o, s, t, or bo, bis, bit, uh, the actual ending is so often an o or an s or a t or a mus, or a tis, or an unt. The first person singular, actually, it's, uh, it's normally either an O or sometimes an M. So you get amabam, amabas, amabat. So the, the, the first singular is either an O or an M, but then it goes S, T, mus, tis, unt in almost all of the tenses. You know, you'll be able to give me examples of where that is not the case. Uh, the perfect tense, for example, am are we, that's an I. Am are we you know, that's another I. So it doesn't always work. But for what I'm going to teach you now, it pretty well does work, uh, and you'll find this useful. So, if instead of O, S, T, mus, tis, unt, you learn O, ris, Tur, mur, mini, untur, okay, you can convert most of your active voice tenses into passive voice tenses, okay? So we'll have a little look at how that works with the present tense of amo. So the present tense passive of amo is amo, amaris, amato, amamo. Amamini, amantur. Okay, and if you look carefully at that, you'll see that O, S, T, mus, tis, unt, on the end of the present sem of amul, has become O, ris, tur, mur, mini, untur. Amor, amaris, amatur, amamur, amamini, amantur. Okay, and it works for the other verbs too. So moneo, instead of going o, s, t, must, isn't, 
goes, Moneor, Moneris, Monetur, Moneimur, Monemini, Monentur. Okay? Now, it won't surprise you to hear that Rego is a bit of a pig and, you know, does some funny things. But, just have a look at this. Regor, Regeris, Regitur, Regimur, Regimini, Reguntur. Okay, so you've still got Oristur, Mur, Mini, Untur. And as always with Regor, you've just got to work out, sometimes there's a vowel required. And you just have to know which vowel it is. It's normally an E or an I. So, regor, regeris, regitur, regimur, regimini, reguntur. Okay? Audio behaves really nicely. Audio, audieris, auditor, audimur, audimini, audiuntur. Really, really easy. If you look at the present tense active, and the present tense, passive, all we've done is we've converted o, s, t, mustis, unt to o, ris, tur, mur, mini, untur. Really, really easy stuff. And capio, you know, once you've got rego right, capio does what you kind of expect. Capior, caperis, capitur, capimur, capimini. Capiuntur. Okay, so I don't think you're going to have any trouble with this. Uh, when you spot them in Latin and you're translating from Latin into English, I always think they're pretty easy to spot. Uh, the third persons, singular or plural, always end you are, and they just take what would have been the active form, like amat, and they add you are. Amator, regit, regitur. Capit, capitur, monet, monetur. So, you know, pretty easy stuff, I think. But it's always fun having a new load of endings to learn. So just make sure you can run through the present tense passive of all of those verbs. Amo, monio, rego, audio, and capio. Okay? Uh, while we're looking at, you know, passive endings... We'll just have a quick look at the present infinitive, because the present infinitive also has a passive. Now, we know that amare meant to love. Well, there is a passive version of that, and it's going to mean to be loved. Okay? And instead of going amare, it's amari. So you add an I instead of an E. Amare becomes amari. Same for monio. Monere becomes moneri. Rego, well, what can I say? It's a pig, as always. So regere becomes regi. It squishes right down to regi, and that means to be ruled. Regi. Audio behaves nicely. Audire, to hear, becomes audiri. To be heard. And finally, capio tends to behave like rego, so capere, to capture, becomes capi, to be captured. Okay, so, so far what we've learned is the present tense active of a verb has a passive form, and basically you're converting OST mustisunt to or is to more mini under. Okay? And the present infinitive active, which typically ends RE, um, has a present infinitive passive form, which typically ends RI instead, but Rego and Capio are pigs. Okay. Okay, so that's quite a nice little step forward we've taken there. Uh, we've learnt that uh, that Latin verbs have two voices, an active voice and a passive voice. Everything we've learnt so far has been the active, and now we've learnt how to do the present passive. Okay, And when we go on to look at the other tenses, we'll see that 
you know, the little rule we've just learned by OST mustis und becoming oris to mur mini unter is going to be really, really helpful for the present and the future and the imperfect passive. Okay, so, you know, having taken the step of learning the present passive, you're kind of most of the way through getting all the way up to the imperfect passive. Okay, I will just finish just you know, it's always fun to see this stuff working with a little passage of Latin just to show you how it works. So uh, in the book, we've got an exercise on page 33. Uh, it's called Exercise 4.4. And if we just have a little look at how uh, Latin looks when you're using the passive, uh, I think you'll find it's pretty straightforward. So we've got Roma Argallis Opugnator. Okay. Normal rules apply. We're going to go to the verb first and we find opugnator. Okay. Now, third person singular, passive. Okay. So the subject is he, she, it, or a noun in the nominative singular, but the subject will be having this verb done to it. Okay. So we go back to the beginning and we find Roma. Now, that's a nominative singular, so it's the subject. Rome, opugnator, is being attacked, argallis, by the Gauls. Okay? Notice how the people doing the attacking are now in the ablative because we're using a passive verb. Okay, on we go. Milites in montes ascendunt. Said senes argallis inveniuntur. Okay, first verb first, ascendunt. Subject is they, or a noun in the nominative plural. So back we go to the beginning and we find milites. There's our subject. The soldiers, ascendunt, climb in montem onto the mountain. So the soldiers climb onto the mountain. Said senes, okay, now I'm kind of jumping the gun slightly. I haven't gone to my second verb, which I should have done. So let's go there first, because it's a, it's a passive, so we need to do this properly. In when yuntur, okay, so that's a third person plural, passive ending. They are found. Who's they? Back to the earlier bit of the sentence, and we've got Senes. So, but the old men in Weniuntur are found, are Gallis by the Gauls. Okay, on we go. Omnes senes interficiuntur et Romani terentur. Okay, first verb first, interficiuntur. Third person plural, passive. So the subject is they, or a noun in the nominative plural. Back we go, and we find omnes senes. All the old men, interficiuntur, are killed et Romani terentur, and the Romans are terrified. Okay, on we go. Urbs tamen ab anserobus sacris Servator. Okay. Verb at the end, servator. Third person singular, passive. So the subject is he, she, it, or a noun in the nominative singular. Back we go, and we've got urbs. The city, however, servator, is saved ab and cerebus sacris by sacred geese. This is a story we've done in one of our Roman history videos, so do have a look at that if you don't know the story. Uh, but it's great stuff. Galli enim de monte peluntur et fugere cuguntur. First verb first, peluntur. Third person plural, passive. So they, or a noun in the nominative plural, peluntur, are driven from pelu. 
to the front we go, Gali Enim. So for the Gauls, Pelunpur are driven, De Monte, down from the mountain, et fugere Koguntur, and they are compelled, Kogo means to compel or to force, and they are forced, fugere, to flee. Okay, so simple little passage of Latin, absolutely riddled with verbs in the passive voice, and as I hope you can see, there's nothing really very spooky. You still follow the golden rules, you still go to your verb first, you find the subject, but just remember, when the verb is passive, the subject of that sentence is having the verb done to it, as opposed to when the verb is active, the subject is doing the verb. Okay? Pretty important distinction, uh, but once you've got it correct, you know, Bob's your uncle. Okay, hope that made sense. Uh, see you back here for more on the passive next time. We'll move on and cover some of the other tenses. Uh, but keep up the good work. Drop me a comment in the box below if you're having any trouble. Uh, do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you back here for more Latin very soon.